What's happening guys, you're here with Nate, this is Crossbeats Production and thank you for tuning in again. Uh, today I want to talk about the Mix Bus Compressor and why I used it on this track and some of the things I've learned from using Mix Bus Compression over the years and some of the tips that I have. Let's get straight into this video, let's go. <laughs> All right, so on your screen, you can see here, I've got the mix bus compressor and I'm using the Wes Audio Dione. This is the hardware version of the SSL Styler compressor. Um, the SSL, which is a native plugin here as well, this is also a pretty good plugin. And I'd suggest if you're you know, not able to get the hardware or you don't have access to the hardware, this is probably the most, I guess, closest that I like at least anyway, as far as the SSL Styler compressors. Um, there are other ones out there, for example, Waves make one, uh, Native Instruments have one. There's a whole bunch of different brands out there. Um, but this one has all the kind of features and the functions that I like that this uh, hardware actually has as well. So the reason why I would choose a SSL style of compressor on this particular mix, and I wouldn't always put it on a mix, this is just subjective. And it also has to do with the taste, the sound, um, the way it affects the transient and a few other things inside a mix bus compression as well. But Let's get into some of the reasons why I use this one. So first off, uh, if you have a listen to this track, I'll just quickly play it and I'll put my bus compressor on, throw the headphones on as well. reasons why I chose this compressor over other compressors and just in general the way I like the sound of it um, and you can kind of hear there is a bit of a I guess the loudness difference between the two with it on and off but that's intentional and the reason why that's intentional is because I'm using this total harmonic distortion here on the actual hardware and I'm also using a mix in parallel so I'm not actually making up any gain and you can see here the zero gain made up but the reason why I use this compressor and not other compressors is because of the one factor is the transient, the way it affects the transient and the release settings that I've got available to me as well. Um, the fact that I've got 10 to one ratio, so I can put this on a 10 to one. So that's quite a high ratio there. And also the fact that it has parallel. So if I was comparing this to, for example, the SSL, you know, the, I guess this is not the SSL, but the solid state bus comp that's, in reference to the SSL. Um, it has also wet and dry. You can use this in a 10 to one ratio. You know, attack is setting here is 10. Release settings a little bit different. Um, that's just one thing. The other thing that I do like though about this one, which is the actual SSL native uh, plugin, it has pretty much all the same things that the, the actual hardware has, um, but you know, it's not gonna give you the total harmonic distortion. So one thing that's lacking in that effect effect is that but you can address the side chain at a you know whatever amount you want whereas on the hardware i've only got 60 90 150 and then these two other which is t1 and t2 uh, so i didn't actually end up using those but i felt like on the plugin it actually gave me a, a response similar to the hardware when i addressed this at 42 hertz so let's check this out let's have a listen again the, the makeup gain it's not exactly the same, but I'm addressing here at 0.5 uh, because I can't get that total harmonic distortion that I can out of the actual hardware. So check this out, have a listen to the plugin, see what you think. Let's go from uh, the same spot. Electric. <laughs> Kind of here it's got that same kind of effect on the transient and what i'm listening to is primarily the kick and the bass together um, when i'm playing this there's a lot of things in this track that are you know element wise that are happening but if i was playing the bass i'll just show you, show you the bass and the kick separately as they're soloed
And I can kind of hear the, the kick has some low end to it and so does the bass itself. But if I was looking on a meter and I'll just pull one up now to show you kind of where I'm, where I'm referring to uh, with this one is the, check out the, the area of the bass and, and the area of the kick. So I'll just solo the bass itself. Now you can kind of see that hits the lowest peak at 50 hertz and then the kick kind of introduces itself around that same kind of area. So check this out. But what I've done to alleviate the kick and the bass clashing is I've actually used a sidechain or I guess an LFO filter um, to, to knock out some of the, the actual bass when the kick comes in. So just by milliseconds, that actually helps a lot to reduce some of that, you know, the clashing between the kick and the bass. And then what I'm doing here with the SSL is I'm kind of pushing them together. So I'm allowing the compressor to kind of combine them together and what they call glue. Um, that's the effect that I'm trying to achieve with the SSL style of compressor. Now, again, you know, with the hardware, it sounds a little bit different because I'm trying to increase the total harmonic distortion with the actual hardware itself. So if you look on this plugin, I'll go back to that again. Uh, on the plugin here, you can see the total harmonic distortion that's set to high. So there's some features that this, you know, this hardware has that some of the plugins won't have. And, you know, it's just what it is. But I'm trying to show you guys the reason why I used the SSL style of compressor was one, uh, it's a VCS style of compressor. So it's very uh, clicky and it has a very sharp attack if you set the right settings on this. And that 10 to 1 ratio gave me just that right amount. And then the release setting was very quick. And the reason for that is because I want to get it straight back in, you know, moving with the track. So I wanted the whole rhythm of the track to move. And I basically watched this needle until I had that actually happening. Um, again, if I was setting this to 1.5, you'd see that. So I'll just quickly show you that as well. So you can see that's actually moving with the kick and it's adjusting in time with that. But I just wanted this to be really... Uh, punchy so I set that to a 10 to 1 ratio so I could get that real snap and that punch now you can see because of that the needle's barely moving and you don't want it to be moving a whole lot because I'm using 10 to 1 ratio so it's kind of limiting a little bit more than it would be compressing in that sense but that gives me that attack that I want that punch and this is why I really love this compressor for this type of thing. And it's just a trick I guess you can use SSL style of compressors for. Other compressors do something similar to this as well, but I felt like this really achieved um, the sound that I was after. So hopefully this gives you a good idea as to why I chose the SSL on this uh, mix. And it gives you a bit more of an idea of how to navigate this, this compressor as well, because it looks simple. I mean, sometimes it looks difficult, but if you understand the reasons why this compressor works well, then you could effectively use this on a track and you may not want to use it for that same reason. So hopefully you guys learned something here. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.